Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Atom RPG. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that it shows to join me today as uh, we continue exploring... Uh... Oh, I... Uh, we have asked questions of his, uh, of this dude before. What I was gonna say is, as we continue exploring uh, Fogelevka, but then I got lost in the dialogue over here as I, uh, yeah, we still have to question to ask this because last episode we found out that this guy was basically a terrorist. Uh, and I can show you the book that he had. It might be this one. No, that's the one about my brother and all. A list of victims, that's right. He keeps a book or a list of victims. And uh, th th I, I guess he might have been like a... a, a I don't know though. He might like the dates here. These are all after the war, so it's not like even political. Oh well, it might be politically motivated, of course, but it's not in it, probably working for the state or anything. So I'm not really sure where this is gonna go. Let's find out. Uh, let's see. Interesting. How do you sleep at night after killing so many? Costias Diob. I'm gonna call him by his uh, birth name, I suppose. The man's face doesn't change. He just sighs which is eerie and absolutely creepy because he sighs without changing his face. I sleep calmly, he says, as God is my witness. Sometimes when there's no work, I even sleep too much. Oh, so he's... What's the word? Like, he's coming across as... Uh, Self-assured is not the... What's... what's uh, how do you... Cockish. Cockish or cocky? Cocky is the word, yeah. He's cocky about it as well. Uh, so I will raise my indignation knob and uh, up to 11 and see what I can do here. And the lives you took, do they not haunt you? I won't judge you. No, I will. I have judged you already. Yes. Uh, do they not haunt you? The man sighs again without without changing his face, but lowers his gaze again without changing his face. And they do, he says. Every time someone reminds me of them, they do. They don't haunt you all that much because you didn't change your face. And you know how face works. So this is our last conversation, he says. But what can be done about it? Crying and hating myself won't bring them back. So I just keep on living. God will punish me for my crimes in the end. I will s never save myself from his wrath. Now go with God. Don't talk to me anymore. Uh... <laughs> Well, yeah, well, I suppose, you bastard using God to clean your slate. Um, which is a weird sentence, but it's basically what he's doing. Let's see what else I can do. Uh, those are some warped as shit morals, dude. Uh, it's not really about the morals, it's the about the reasoning. And I guess the, it's it's really about the reasoning, really, because it's not like, you know... It's, it, I guess, I guess he still sees them as a bad thing. It's not about the morals. It's just, it's the reasoning, right? Why? That's very logical. <laughs> See? It's the reasoning. It's about the reasoning. Uh, I can shrug my shoulders and walk away. Uh, let's let's just attack him and see where this is going to get us. Because we might have to reload if everybody else in the village attacks us. Oh, yeah, they do. So we can't just pretend that we killed him. Uh, and, uh, and, and say that we did or something. I don't know. Or we might actually... So Lenin right now, I told him to avoid. He's got like the thing that says avoid. Avoiding, that's the one. Uh, and I can shoot you in the eyes. And miss. But the problem here really is that everyone attacks me. Also getting out of town is gonna be a tricky thing because uh, these ones seem to be relatively peaceful. But the problem is these people over here are, um, are aggressive. I can't see! Well, you, you certainly can't put three dot ellipses. Oh, I didn't even go inside! Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, Fidel is taking damage. This is bad news. Please don't kill Fidel. Lenin, I mean. Okay. Okay. This really, I mean... It's kind of cool that you can... That you can attack them. They're, they're, they have health today. Holy crap. Fidel only took a damage from all that sound? Well, Fidel just died. There it is. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm gonna reload. So it's kinda cool that you can attack them, but it it's it's a false choice, really. I mean maybe later, but you it's like Initiate Absolute Genocide. Yeah, that those are nice rifles though. I like I would like that. But I'm not a rifleman, so yeah. Anyway, can't do that. 
Uh, really doesn't matter, so let's not even... Uh, do we, did we get any experience from telling him about things? Uh, do they not haunt you? Uh, let's go with the sh shit morals. Nope, it doesn't do anything, so I will save my option for later when I come back with a power armor. Because I'm pretty sure there's going to be a power armor in this game, right? It, there must be. Hello! I talked to you already, didn't I? I did. Um, so there it is. I talked to you as well. And there it is. So I ca Oh yeah, I definitely did. I, I came from your room and uh, you guys didn't even seem to mind. Lenin, stay out. I'm, I'm looting. He's not gonna stay out, is he? Dang it. Oh, they're going away. They're going away. She's going away. Nope, they're not going away. Can I go in here? Do I need to? There's nothing here, though. Well, if she leaves, that's gonna be a good thing, because I do want to take their stuff. I wonder if I can push her. Nope. Yeah. I got these already. But not those. She might not be able to see me, though. Oh, she does. She definitely does. Ah, well. We're moving on. So, we've been everywhere over here. We have been... Although I don't remember talking to you. I mean... No, nope, I definitely don't. And I think we've been everywhere on the other side of the village as well. Uh, oh, it's her! Sorry. I... Yeah, it's kind of tricky to... Uh, to identify who's whom from up here. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So, that's... The guy... No, that's... Oh, it's this dude. Hey, show me your wares. Do you have anything left? Not anything left. Hello. Uh, oh, it's this dude. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, he also sells things, but I don't need that. It's the hunter. And then in here, I believe I've been in here, but let's just make sure I have not. I'm pretty sure I have not. I'll take all of your cutlery. Unfortunately, I won't because you see me. So that's a bit of a problem. Uh, but it's a good thing they don't mind that too much. Can you not go in there? Oh my god. Oh, I'm sort of stuck. Oh, well, that's an easy fix. Except for... The f oh my, my god, I'm really stuck right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let's try that again. So I didn't get anything uh, since... Yeah, we just we didn't do anything. Let's just go in here. And see if we can do this a little bit better without getting stuck for whatever reason. There you go. Nothing. Beer and food. This is the best. Potatoes. This is definitely the best. Oh, and we got another, another something over there. That's canned meat. Now, I wonder if I can get that... Kent, that's a shame. Hi. A young woman uh, greets you with a smile on her face. You immediately notice bunches of various herbs, roots, and wool, or sorry, whole threads with dry mushrooms tucked behind her belt. She's holding a large burdock leaf in her hand and using it as a fan and an umbrella at the same time. Welcome. An umbrella? Is it really? Because it's not raining. How do you use something as an umbrella? If it's not raining. It's like you can use a, something as a table if you don't have things on top of it. Anyway, welcome to Fogelevka, she says. I am a local herb healer. I can sell you some of my natural potions. Uh, can I get a discount? Nope. She says she can't. She has wolf antidote. A quality antidote with many ingredients helpful to those who got poisoned in the wasteland. Why is it called wolf antidote? Nobody will know. Ever. Uh, I really want to talk, uh, talk to you about life. Fine. Uh, yeah, how, uh, how is life here in Fogelevka? Nothing much is happening around here, she says. I'm selling all kinds of herbs and potions and my husband is a hunter. Sometimes the caravans heading to the mountain pass of woes go through the village. Then we get to sell our goods to them in large quantities. That's about as exciting as it gets. Uh, where, where do you get your ing ingredients? The area around here is covered with forests and small swamps. You wouldn't believe how many different plants grow there. Ambrosia... Whorehound, whore, whore, what the heck is that word? What is a whore? I don't know what that is. Gagea, Gagia, 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 Gagay, 
So anyway, Goldsbeard, Fat Hen, Saltbush, and the list goes on. Uh, have you heard any interesting rumors? People say that Krasnos Nomeni rule is spreading wider and wider. That's nothing but good news, I say. Who knows, maybe there will come a time when we'll create our own republic. After all, we already have a flat, a TV station, and a postal service. Not a flat, sorry, that would make no sense. A flag. Uh, old men say it's just like the pre-war times. It get, well, yeah, you can, yeah. It's dangerous here. Is it dangerous here around the village, I'm gonna ask? Nah, since the government in Krasnoz many took over the life here became pretty comfortable. Before that, the village was raided by thugs and extortionists almost daily. But now we even managed to save enough money to build a picket fence. This whole saving of money, what are you, why, are you building a picket fence out of money? Or, because I would say that you're probably, it's, mm, I don't, it's, yeah. I mean, I I understand. Mm, I don't really see that. I don't. I don't. Mm, I can't. Mm, yeah, yeah. That doesn't make any sense. They would. They would just go out the woods and and uh, also. <laughs> no, you don't have a picket fence for sure. No, actually, they do. Yeah, look at that. Uh, but that wouldn't be the highlight here. They might be talking about this. <clears throat> excuse me. But um, uh, yeah, you you would just go into the woods and and. Uh, and cut the trees. You'd probably cut the trees next to the, the thing, but these are probably here for uh, uh, pretty reasons. It's not realistic. It's not meant to be, because otherwise the game would look weird. Um, okay, so, where are we going? Look at the map. We have the Roaring Forest. A left click. Dang it. Stop. Right click. Um, Paragon. We know where Paragon is. Fantastic. Okay, so we're gonna take this road and go to Krasnoz Nameni, because we definitely need... I mean, now that I'm here, I might as well... I could explore the, the rest of this place. But we definitely need to go back to Krasnoz Nameni, so... I, I don't know how this is gonna turn out. Let's see what... Oh! I've been ambushed by the murderers! Oh, I leveled up as well. This is great news. Uh, can I just camp? I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind that. Also because I might need some food. I could go for a little bit of a eat, uh, roast my food, and off, and there we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna need to use Gasparadid on you, probably, forever. I, I really don't think he heals over time. Uh, people keep telling me he doesn't heal over time. I'm just waiting to confirm, because he's not gonna be fighting for a little while. Until I have a rifle for him, is basically gonna be irrelevant. Um, so we leveled up, our skills are gonna stay where they are. Our ability might, uh, abilities might not. Oof. Well, they are, actually. It's going to be a long time until we can get anything else. Uh, that would be the quick reload. Probably not really that important. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah, that's probably what, what, where I'm going to go. Uh, having rifles is, is uh, probably a very good thing. Is there anything here? There is nothing here. Well, there's this thing, but it'd be a good <clears throat> excuse me. He'd be a good source of iron, that or whatever that's made of the telephone post. It's not a telephone post. It's like a huge electrical post that's I don't know the names of or these things. I don't know what th those are called. So I'm just going down here because oh, this is the end of the map. You notice three wanderers standing around a campfire. Would you like to stop and have a talk? Yes. Yes, I would. Because it might be a special encounter. Because those exist in this game. Hi! Okay. Hello, sir. You see a tired man of about 30. His face is lacerated. In his strong, callous hands, he holds an old rifle. The barrel is not aimed at anyone in particular, which is a good thing, considering that, anyway, it would, I mean, no matter the option here would be a bad thing, but travels from side to side, as if ready to take aim at one of the men's companions at any second. So it, it does, yeah, so he's not, it's not that he's against me, he's against them. Upon seeing you, the man lifts his weapon. Towards me, or just in general? Oh, whoa, oh, another one joins in. It's not in your interest to spook me, man. I can shoot you where you stand. Calm down, dude. I want to ask questions. Who are you? Ivan Kondratev, Vzevolod's bodyguard. 
Who's that Volod? The disco dancer looking guy over there. But I won't be at his side for long. In the near future, I'll probably become a gun for hire. Which you are not right now. That's very interesting how you are a bodyguard without being a gun for hire. Because of because the shit I got into today tasted pretty sour. Mm-hmm. So why are you standing he all here for? We're standing because I said so. I'm not leaving this place until I know what's odd. We were going to Krasnos and Ameni. Me, those two guys, and the driver. First day turned out okay. Ashot pointed the way since he's our guide. Boris drove fine like always. Him knowing his was so good. That's another brand of trucks. We spent the night at old lady Nadia's cabin. She's a great old crone, you know. Even though she's crazy about cats, she told us a story about a new kind of mutant living at the s local swamp. The leather worm. It's one hell of a beast. Looks like a thin snake or a large worm. The. What? You, what are snakes not thin? What? How do. What? <laughs> What? Okay, sure. At least it's not a mermic, so I'm I'm glad for that. If one of those creatures sneaks inside your skull through the year, it's the end of you. He'll possess your brain, and your whole body will be his. And he'll do it so well, no one would have the skills to tell the difference. The biggest clue would be this: the possessed person will start mixing up names and forgetting some small events from the past. Oh, and another thing: this is the second time the game pulls this, by the way, because we heard the Krasnov effect or whatever the disease is that they made up for. As far as I can tell, it's a made-up disease by the, the, the officials of Krasnos and many. But this is the second time this joke is being pulled on us. Because it's clearly a joke. It's clearly meant to be like, you know, uh, nobody would in their right mind would ever believe this. And there are people who are not in their right mind, so I can't say that he wouldn't be one of those people. But this is the second, second time the game does this. Anyway. And another thing, the possessed human turns into a cannibal. It's... A, which, uh, as we know, is uh, characterized by having, uh, let's see, horns and uh, a uh, diamond-shaped pattern on the forehead. That's that, and then they turn into a cannibal by having that, you know, happen. Because you get horns and the diamond-shaped pattern in the forehead. That's what happens. <laughs> Did it? Yeah, uh, it's a sciency word for a man eater. Oh no, that's that was even worse than the we weird way you used it. Uh, cause you would say he starts eating human flesh, <laughs> not turns into a cannibal, so he's like, turns into a murderer. No, no, he's, he just kills people. They, they kill people. Um, also that would be a way bigger, like, the biggest clue, that's not the biggest clue. The fact that people are eating people is a big clue, isn't it? That's, uh, anyway, it's, it's a joke, as I said. And then he says, cannibal is a sciencey word. Uh, well, I, I can see what he, what he's saying. He's, he, yeah, a six-year-old probably wouldn't know the word unless they watch television a little bit too much, or maybe a, at all. Um, that's the story of old Nadia, uh, the story old Nadia told us. And on the next day, we got into a car crash. It was probably raining a few days ago, so the road got all mushy. Looked like solid gravel, but in, re in reality it was slippery as heck. So we drove off the road, as you do. And found ourselves in the middle of the swamp, or the, sorry, the same swamp the old crone told us about. And that's not even the worst of it. We got separated while getting out of there. Boris sank, I fell, Ashot ran away somewhere. These are very bad excuses for getting separated, by the way. <laughs> you fell and you got separated? What happened? Did you fall off the truck? Cause <laughs> Well, that would be a better excuse. And Vzevolod done gods know what any outside anyone's view for 10 minutes or so. As a result, I, that was a very specific detailed thing that makes me think he, that is another joke. Was he beating the meat or something? I don't know. As a, re, as a result, he says, I don't trust those two no more. Who knows? Maybe one of them is possessed by the leather worm. No, maybe that... Maybe... Uh, yeah. Can I ask you... What did I ask just now? Can I help you somehow? That's a good that's a good question. Uh, how can you help me out? If one of them is possessed, he'll never show it. Un well, yeah. I was gonna say that. Until you turn your back to him, at least. Uh, I can start talking to them. This... I, is this gonna be the quest? I think I know what your problem is. <laughs> I do. That's <laughs> not the point, though. Hey, hello, sir. Uh, he looks... 
Is he the one that's the disco dancer? I don't know. I've never danced in a disco. Uh, what? I don't. Have, it's okay. I mean, he looks a little bit 70s. That cardigan is a little bit 80s, though. But anyway, the, he over here just doesn't look like that. But it's fine. The clothing, anyway. Certainly not the face. He does have a... I think you can see the... Um, a scar over there. Anyway, you see a serious... Middle-aged man, not a serious face, he's just serious, he's a serious person. Uh, and he, I'm seeing the middle-aged man who is a serious person. With clean-shaven cheeks, hidden bald spot, and neatly trimmed mustache, he is dressed in br brown suit, which is a type of fabric, red shirt, and patent leather shoes. What is patent leather shoes? I don't know. I have heard of that expression. I That sounds weird. That sounds wrong, to be honest. But anyway, his surprisingly rich costume for a traveler is complemented by gilded eyeglasses and a metallic chain on his fat neck. Uh, I would say chest, but maybe his chest is not fat, and that's why. Anyway, the man looks at you Ooh. angrily. He is obviously very tense about something. Oh, hey, pleb, you local? I are you asking if I'm local? I'm sorry, I'm very bad at English, not my first language. Spill the beans! I don't have a lot of patience right now, with this two nitwits around. Uh, I... N uh, nope, sorry, I'm just passing by. The man lets out a disappointed gasp. Damn it, shit. How much longer should I sit here, with these two nutjobs of all people? The man casts a uh, hateful glance at his companions. Ah, fuck my life. Uh, so who are you? The man looks surprised and then shakes his head as if remembering that nobody here knows him. Which would make sense if I were the man. This line doesn't make sense. <laughs> you don't remember that nobody here knows you. You just, like, unless... There's so many assumptions that you need to make to be able to understand this sentence. <laughs> that is, it's kind of funny because it tells you a lot in in a in a single sentence. It tells you that he's famous. It tells you that he uh, thinks, or rather, probably this is his confirmation throughout his life that everybody knows him, or a lot of people know him. He's so used to people knowing him that he's surprised when I ask him who he is. Um, it also uh, there's also the assumption that people around here don't know him. I don't. I don't know what that rightly means. Is that the wastelands that th they don't know him? Or is it just the three of us? Which makes no sense, because they're... Anyway, it's fine. Anyway, we're just going to continue. V Zevolod Markelov, the name. Trade is my game. I'm the famous owner of the Markelov and Son Cooperative. What? You never heard about it? Unfucking believable What is this shithole? Question mark, dot, dot. Also, how are you the owner of a cooperative? I am... I... Sorry, never heard about it. The man angrily looks into a point somewhere on the horizon and sadly, sa and sighs sadly. Um, so, uh, tell me about yourself. I thought I already told you. No, I, the questions are weird. So what happened here? The man looks vexed. I, a wealthy, intelligent man, got stuck here with these two chimps. That's what happened here. I was invited to a local major city, Krasnos Nameni, to have a talk with the Chamber of Commerce representatives. I tried to go my, grow my business in any way possible, which is interesting, even more, but he's the owner, so yeah. So I took the offer without a second thought. It's very smart of you as the owner of a business. Got my best outfit and some samples of my wares. Hired a guide, took my best guard. I thought, oh. No, still, he's a gun for hire, even though he was already in your employ before the journey started. I thought he was my best, at least, and got Boris on the wheel. And then we moved out into this rotten corner of the wastes. Uh, in, okay. And after that, there was the road. Or should I say the lack of it? Question mark dot dot. Nothing our Uwaz, or Uwaz, could not handle, though, at least in the beginning. It was a jolly ride. No local pleb, second time I use that word, would catch up to us. Quite nice, actually. I think it is. He's trying to. I think. I think he's just me meant to come across as uh, nobility. He's maybe that would like not nobility as in actual uh, an actual royalty thing, but you know, you know, he, he, he's an elitist. It's like he's the. They probably have a word for that. What's the word for that in in like 
Soviet jargon. It's a parasite. Yeah, let's go with that. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, quite nice, actually, he says. Sitting in the warm car, looking at all the trees passing by. One, one night... No, when night came, we stayed at old Lady Valia's house. She's a good old gal, you know. She lives alone with Petka, her cat. I don't know why she's crazy about him. That guy did say it in a way that less made her seem like uh, the stereotypical crazy cat lady uh, and more made it sound like the, that this guy that I talked to before didn't just didn't like cats. And he, he said, oh, even though she she's a good lady, even though she's crazy about cats. Like, which, which makes it sound like he just doesn't like cats and thinks less of all the people who like cats. Anyway. And, fear, and doesn't fear anything. A real queen of her ruined gas station. But this time, she didn't feed just feed us and lay us to bed. She told us this story about the skin worm and how it targets people that travel alone, how it drives them mad and destroys their companions to eat them after that. Oh, really? What kind of beast is this? There's no such beast. That's moronic. Old wives' tales. Proletariat folklore. Again, it's just, yeah, it's, I, I, I was right in the way he's trying, he, he's written, he's, he's trying to, he, yeah, he's, he's meant to come across as that. Made up by people that trade with old Valia. The legend goes there's a mutant in the local swamp that if you walk where, uh, they're all alone, falls on top of you from a branch and crawls inside your mouth. And when inside you, he connects to your nervous system, you know, destroys your personality and switches it to his own, which is not what I heard. You become a so because you like it's the same people, the same person, same personality, except the forgetting of things. You become a sort of doll controlled by the worm from the inside, but you don't look the part. Which I what? Nobody ever knows this is your change. Oh, you don't look like a sort of a doll controlled. I see what you mean. Probably you look the part would be the correct sentence here, but this also works. It's not incorrect, it's just weird. Um, nobody ever notices your change. Only one major difference, the worm has trouble with your original memories. He mixes up names and locations and all that. And do you know why he takes o you over? To lure real humans into traps and feast on their flesh. Because one human is not enough. That's why they need like a, this sort of bait, human for bait. Yeah, it makes sense. Only human flesh is nutritious to the worm, they say. But that's all bullshit. Moronic bullshit. Second time he uses that word as well. Uh, so what happened next? Man's face fills with a deep torment. We continued our drive in, t in the morning. Oh, we'd be in Krasnos and many come noon, if not for the accursed fog. You could have cut it with a knife. My bo- It's not saying much, because it's fog. My Boris was an ace driver, but he couldn't see squat and sh crashed into a tree. And then we all fell. The tree, the goods, the car, the car, excuse the hiccup, and we inside it all went into that stinking sinkhole. We, myself, Ivan the guard, Ivan guard, that's just his name, the Kasparov, and Kasparov, the guide, got out through the roof of the car, but Boris could not handle it. He hit his head over the wheel and sank to the bottom with all our stuff minutes later. The water bubbled for half an hour or so. Then we saw that we we're in the, that same swamp from Valia's story. Kasparov started running first. That's what you get with locals, just straight away ran through the underbrush. Me and Ivan, we followed, but Ivan fell into a bush while I kept on running. He cra- oh, that's the fall, yeah. He cra- so you, you got separated. He got separated because you kept on running. That's the problem. He cramped his leg on so or, or something along those lines. In other words, we lost each other for a while and we regrouped only when we got here. You think now is a great time to start looking for some locals to help us out? Not for those two. Kasparov, the frigging savage, not but with a coma this time around, told us he won't to move or show us the way anymore because he can't guarantee some of us aren't changed by the worm. And Ivan, who I trusted with uh, my life, whom... Uh, started repeating the same bullshit, saying Vzelo, Vze, Vze, Vzevolod, I'm sorry, his name is foreign to me. I'm not too sure you're not infected by the worm, and I'm not sure about the guide either. Maybe you're both cannibals now. Again, the murderers and things. Anyway, maybe you're just waiting until I turn my back on you. And now we're in this dilemma. I want to go look for help to get my car out of the swamp, but I can't do this with no guide, and the guide I have won't move since he's afraid we'll eat him. And my guard simply wants to abandon us as soon as his leg gets better, and meanwhile he's threatening to shoot anyone who makes a move. I'd shoot him myself, but I have no gun, which is 
smart of you. And I somewhat pity the idiot. He served me for years on end. Why wouldn't you pity him if he had... If he did. I mean, that's not pity. It's liking, you idiot. But I... It, it might be pity. And if you take it... If you take that as seriously, that... That ju just paints him as all the worse. So that's why we're here, just sitting, waiting for someone to come out of, of it. Uh, I can help you with our dilemma. Really? Yeah. Uh, although it's just I'll do that in a little bit, because, um... Uh, rumors? Well, I heard that Sioma Voronok is serious about taking over the Skolovsky cloth factory. Thing is, nobody will... It's a sewing factory. Just sewing cloth. Anyway, nobody will work for this bath bastard. So you better stock up on cloth. There's gonna be a shortage of it till winter. What? You never heard about any of this and you don't care? Well, that's because I'm not from around here and local rumors are the last thing on my mind. Which is basically a rehash of the joke I got already. Thank you. Well, um, uh, I should probably go because I should probably talk to this guy, but I also should probably end the episode because we're out of time. So for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Atom RPG. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.